When racial segregation was commonplace in the United States through the early half of the 20th century, things were no different in Salt Lake City. In one arena that was apparent in the press was the plight of black performers coming to town, unable to stay in the hotels near the venues they'd be playing in. Marquee performers like Harry Belafonte and Ella Fitzgerald were refused rooms at the Hotel Utah when they came to town. Famed concert singer Marian Anderson was scheduled to sing at the LDS Tabernacle and was only allowed to stay at the Hotel Utah on the condition that she used the freight elevator to get to her room. Although the issue with segregation in hotels in the city wouldn't be fixed until there was a reform in federal laws in the 1960s, Utah was not without its early victories in civil rights. One of the major breakthroughs in this era came from Robert E. Freed, a prominent civil rights leader. Freed and others took over the lease of the Lagoon theme park, but the lease prohibited blacks from using the swimming pool in the ballroom due to a city ordinance in Farmington requiring it. Not content to allow the bigotry of the status quo to continue, Freed fought to change the city ordinance and, by the end of the 1940s, Lagoon was open to everyone. Freed was eventually bestowed a Human Rights Award by the Utah chapter of the NAACP, which he claimed to be the award he earned that gave him the most satisfaction. <laughs> 